This your boy, Shaw, a.k.a. Shaw the Barber, a.k.a. Skill Hands at Work. And we're about to get into this conversation with some barbershop talk. First topic, first time we doing this, we got J-Dub in the building. Say what's up, J-Dub. Hey, what up, what up, what up, good people, what up? And we're about to get into this conversation. So, J-Dub, you a black man. Yes, sir. How long you been a black man? 37 years. 37 years. So, about the same amount of time as me. I got a couple years on it. But... Tell me, do you think it's easy? Now, see, you are a bigger black man than I am. And I'm a big brother. I, yeah, you're a big brother. I'm like, so, three, I'm like 300. And how tall are you? Like 6'1", six 6'2". Six so, I like to say 6'3", but 6'1", 6'2". 6'1", 6'2". So I ain't nowhere near as tall as him, and I ain't got the size advantage that he has. But I know what it's like for me walking through the, the streets, through, through stores, just interacting. And I want to know. Because I'm always giving my opinion on matters and people listen to me and they thinking it's just my opinion. So I'm trying to get other people's perspective and I want to have a discussion about this. What do you feel it's like being a black man and walking the streets every single day? Well, it, it's difficult. Um, you know, I know you and I had initially talked um I started wearing glasses probably, you know, let's see, 37. I was about 32, 31. And I notice, you know, I look less intimidating with the glasses on. I feel, all right, well, he's gla- he's got he's he's more astute. He's got something going on, some intelligence about him. So, you know, it kind of uh, makes me more docile. You know, kind of waters me down a little bit, um, as opposed to when I I didn't have the glasses. You know, I don't have any tattoos. You know, I'm just a average looking you know black man. But um, you know, I I'm used to the looks. It's it's, it's, it's nothing new. Um, but you know, it's, it's very difficult, you know? All right. So, so, so this man talked about how he looks in his, in, in his education. I want to just make it clear. I'm not going to be on here talking to no, to no lames and no, no, no bums. This man has credentials and I'm on, uh, I, I should have said this in the very beginning, but I want to make sure that this is clear. Tell us a little bit about your education background. Well, see, so you, you're going you gonna to make me laugh, man. So, but I worked hard for it. My master's of uh, health administration. Uh, my undergrad is also uh, in health care management and administration. Um, I've got a Six Sigma black belt. That's process improvement. Um, I've also, I'm a certified uh, scrum master, another type of process improvement, project management. I'm also a certified uh, project manager as well. Um, all those through uh, uh, different uh Different, different um, institutions, but you know, I've, I've been busy the last uh, probably about eight years trying to play catch up and, and get in the books and you know get the, that piece of paper that you know kept me from quite a few jobs. So, so a lot of the stuff that he said just just because it's over my head a little bit, but I talk to him on a regular basis, so he gave me a good understanding. When this man said black belt, I don't want nobody to think that he's in karate going around nah, here kicking nah. people's butts. But tell us a little bit about what this black belt means. Black belt. Um, and like I said, it, it's it's process improvement. Uh, just to break it down, you know, uh, just at a high level, uh, you know, Toyota and GE uh, started Six Sigma, um, and it's the uh, DMAIC uh, process where you define, measure, analyze, implement, and then control uh, any type of problem. So when they say Six Sigma, um, it's it's a rating. So if you are uh, building, you know, building any type of um, products, making any products, it, it's all about measuring defects. So they're looking at products um, at, at, at a million. So a million products. They want it to be, it's like 99.999997% accurate. So that point oh 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 whatever that is, oh 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 three, I think it's like six zeros. That's the six sigma rating, and you go down to five sigma, it drops down, and it'll keep dropping down. But six sigma is, is where you really need to be at when you when you're making products. Okay, so you see that I'm talking to an educated brother. We're not sitting here. I'm I, I'm really not concerned with how, with brothers who walking around the street with their pants sagging and doing all these different things. I'm not for that. I'm not pro that. I'm not against it. But that's not who I'm trying to reach out to. That's not. I won't. I, I deal with good brothers every day, every absolutely, day. Absolutely, and I want the world to know that we out here, and that 
we making moves. This man is making moves in his life. He's making himself better. But even with all the training that he has, he still has the same problems as every other black man in this world. Absolutely. So it don't matter how hard we work to not be like everybody else. We end up categorized like everybody else. And that is my goal is to make it clear that we're not all the same. We might have the same skin complexion, but we don't have the same attitudes. We don't have, have the same drive, same motivation. And I want the world to know that. And I don't know why it seems so hard for everybody else out there to find or notice that good men are out here. But this brother right here that's sitting across from me right now, he is going above and beyond to prove to the world. And it's sad that we have to do that. But I get off topic a lot. The topic of this conversation that we're supposed to be having is what is it like being a black man? Now, this man has a master's degree. And I want to hear what are some of the things that you notice when you walk around? How do you feel? Well, I mean, even in the corporate world, you know, we can start there. Um, a lot of the individuals don't have the same amount of credentials that I have. You know, I've worked places um, where, you know, my immediate bo uh, bosses you know, you know, they might have a bachelor's, you know, at, at the most they might have a master's, but they don't have any certifications, you know, like I'm getting a cert probably every two years for the last, I don't know, six years. I'm always trying to, to push myself, always trying to learn it. You know, you never, you know, need to stop. You always need to, 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 to grow and, and look for ways to, to improve yourself. So, you know, it's very difficult when, you know, you get passed over for, for jobs. Um, kind, kind of something funny. Um, I was applying for jobs um, and I was like, you know what? Let, let me try a different, a different approach. So I didn't put on there that I was black. I said, you know, did not want to self identify. And, you know, I was like, let's, let's try Let's roll the dice. Let's see what happens. And unfortunately, you know, I would get the, Hey, you know, you need to identify, identify. And it, it, it's, you know, it's really disheartening that I'm trying any way to just get in front of these people, um, you know, to, 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 you know, just to be able to, cause I feel if, if I get an interview, I'm going to nail it and you're going to hire me. It's just, you know, I just need to, that door just cracked open a little bit and I'm going to bust it open. Okay. So I make it a point to tell everybody, I, I being in the barbershop, this is why I love my job. Like I feel like I could have did anything that I wanted to. I didn't want to go to school for all these years to, to get masters and all this stuff. But I, I feel like this is a place where I get to spread knowledge and get to touch people. It, it, they minds. I get to talk to them. I got them. And, and this shop, the way that I have it set up, everybody has their own room because I can control the conversation within my walls. Now, this is the thing I feel. And this is just my opinion. But as a black man, you already have you're at a disadvantage. So you can't waste any time. You can't waste any opportunities. You right, always right, have right, to right. be better. You can't be average. You can't be mediocre. You have to always be on your A game. Always. Now, I stress this to my kids. I don't allow them to have a bad day in school. I don't allow them. I don't, I, I'm hard on my kids. But the reason I'm hard on them is because I want them to know. They go to a predominantly white school. I want them to know you can never relax your standard because you're going to stand out. Absolutely. And it simply is just as much as the color of our skin that makes us stand out. I spent, look, I'm retired Air Force. I was always the only, most of the time, the only black person in my job. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because if I was in a group of 50, you couldn't tell who wasn't there if they weren't, if they weren't there. Right. But if I was ever missing, it was always, you knew I was not there. I could not be late because I stood out. Absolutely. I couldn't be missing because I stood out. Everything in my life, I always had to make sure I played by the rules because I stood out. I'm not tall. I'm five, nine and three quarters. I claim five, 10, but there it is. <laughs> it said, I, I can't miss a beat. And even owning my own business, I have to always be cautious. My business is in a predominantly white area, but we have black people in this area. It's just not a whole lot of them. Right. So 
I do, I serve, you know, I service both. But what I'm saying is I can't have anybody act a fool outside of my location because as soon as I do, it's going to be, uh, it's because it's black people running the business. Right. So I have to be better than all the businesses next to me and make sure we make no noise yep. at this location. So this is some of the stresses that we see in the corporate world. We see it in the streets. Yep. I mean, let's talk about the instance where you was how old? Se- se- I was, let's see, grade? I'm seventh grade, so I don't think I had turned third. So I was about, tw- I was 12. And actually, you know, my, most of my adolescence, I grew up in, in Bond Hill, you know, for the folks who listen to this who are not from Cincinnati, predominantly um, black area, inner city. Um, and I had a buddy uh, named Josh Dunning um, who I used to hang out with. Uh, over in Carthage, which is the flip side, uh, predominantly white area, but also lower income. Uh, so, and then and they, they touched each other, Bond Hill and Carthage. And one time I was over there and we were going in the store and I walked up the stairs to the store and ended up bumping into an elderly uh, Caucasian uh, lady. And for whatever reason, she thought I was trying to steal her purse. She took her purse out and she maced me in the face. Now, you was in the seventh grade. Seventh grade. So, how old are seventh graders? That's I was like, like 12. 12 years like old. 12. So, you got maced. Maced. For bumping into somebody. It was an accident. And you got maced because she thought she was going to steal her purse. Yep. Now, that's that's an extreme story right there because it bothers me when I walk down the street. Now, I know my beard makes me look even more. It, it doesn't do anything for me, but I wasn't allowed to have facial hair, so that's why I have it now. You're making I'm up walking. for lost time. I'm making up for lost time. Yes, sir. So... It was it's it's crazy because I walk down the street and you see a, a person clench their purse like yep. you're a criminal and it's like I'm not a criminal but it angers me because it's like I I want to do something just because you think that that's who I am and I don't want you to be walking around feeling wrong all day but I don't and I'm not a criminal but it's just irritating when you know now a lot of people who are hearing this they gonna think well a lot of this is because of good reason and. Maybe you have a valid point. Maybe the media and everything else plays it as when crime happens, you know, like during Hurricane Katrina, when when people of, of color were, you know, going in and and taking stuff out the store is looting, which, yes, some people were looting. I mean, taking shoes, taking TVs and things like that. That's looting, of course. But then, you know, other other races were going in and they were showing videos of them grabbing bread and they're surviving. Right. So. I get it. It's all about how it's portrayed, but it doesn't matter, in my opinion, what color a person is or how you spin it. We all have to know, and I know from videos I've done before, some women are going to be like, well, you were talking about this and that, but I never said all, and I try to make it a point of never saying all or speaking in what is it called, definites or... uh, Absolutes. Absolutes. Never speaking to absolute. And, and that no, that tells you that this brother is educated and smart oh, yeah. because stop, he knew. Stop. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is uh, I spend most of my time, and even doing these videos, I feel like I'm spending most of my time trying to show the world that we're not all I, – I feel bad that I'm even saying this right now, but – Whenever I meet somebody for the first time in the military, I always walked around put together because I knew I was interacting with somebody who's never met a black person before. It's sad to know that there's people in this world in the 2000s that have never been in contact with a black person before. Right. And you want that first impression to be a lasting impression because they already got preconceived notions in their mind. And it's still going on today. Now, the thing that I want to talk about, and we talked about it yesterday, uh, is this angry black man. Yes, sir. This is a thing that keeps a lot of us bottled up. And me, I have had a very, very frustrating uh, past month, several interactions with the same dentist. And it's one of those things where it's like, at what point? can I show my anger without being considered the angry black man? This is one of those things that I think I hate to see people play the uh, race card for petty reasons. Right. 
the person who's in McDonald's and they forget to put their fries in the bag and now you want to show your anger. Yeah, you might have had a whole lot of things to be angry about. But french fries not being in the bag. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big of a deal. Don't show your butt, your, your colors for that situation. When they service a white person on accident, it could have been an accident before they serviced you. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to be, I, I'm, I'm going to be who I am. It, and you get upset because it's like, I've been standing here all day. Why are you doing this? Because, and it's like, you show that angry emotion so much for something that really is not that big of a deal. Then when something pops up, that's serious. Like this issue. I have every right to be mad about the issue with this dentist, but I can't show it because I feel like they already have a preconceived notion that I'm going to be that angry black man before. Do you ever have situations? And I don't want to get too personal or too much into like detail on your life because I don't, I mean, who knows my, who might hear this, they might know. But do you ever have situations where you feel that you have to be calmer about something than a person who's sitting next to you because you're going to be looked at, especially with your size too. Like Boy. size and color makes a big difference. Yes, sir. So, Hey, I used to be 415 too, man. Okay. Uh, you know, I lost a little bit of weight. I still need to drop out another. 50, 60. You know. Your size fits you, though. It fits you at your height. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. But to answer your question, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm blessed to still have my parents on this earth. Um, they they are my moral compass, to be quite honest. Uh, I hate, you know, the fact that, you know, we have to go through this. Um, you know, I've, I've gone through things, you know, on the job um, to where, you know, it's not – necessarily happening to me because I'm a black man but my reaction has to be bottled up you know I, I have to be very calculated with how I respond you know because of what we're talking about you know you, do, you don't want to cater to the stereotype you know people already have these preconceived notions so you know the way you react is going to lump everyone into the same category that people were already assuming um and, and to be quite honest, it's not fair. And, and you brought up the other situation, people reacting with fries. You know, it could be something where, you know, they're what, because we, we walk around with the weight of our world, you know, and if, on your shoulders, you know, especially, you know, you're a black man taking care of it, like, like this gentleman here. Hey, I've only known Shaw for like five months. Feels like I know his brother forever, for real, real dude. I, you know, I gravitated toward, towards him off the job, off, off the top. Look, very educated brother, smart brother. I, I really I appreciate man, that. This dude right here, I, I learned a lot from him every time I come in here, you know. So I appreciate, you know, getting to know you as well. Um, but, you know, back to what I was saying, you know, it might be something that, you know, you're walking around with. I'll give you an example. Okay. I was 16. Um, and we had moved, my parents had moved from Bond Hill out to Mason. Um, and again, for the folks who are not from around here, uh, Mason, predominantly uh, white area, uh, middle middle to upper class area, um, and you know my parents did that to give us a better life, um, and I appreciate them for it. But I was 16 years old, hopped in my my dad's uh, brand new uh, 1996 Eddie Bauer. Oh, that thing was nice, smooth, had the leather. You know he used to keep it buttery smooth, and hopped in that thing. And I, it might have been three weeks after he got it, took it down the street. Um, I was I don't know what I was doing. I might have been going to work because I didn't have my car at that moment. Uh, no, I didn't know how to drive a stick at that moment. So I would drive his car, my mom's car. And, you know, I got pulled over. You know what I mean? I got pulled over. And they, they, they said, you know, I, I fit, the, uh, fit the description um, of a certain individual that, that stole a vehicle. The vehicle ended up coming back the, that it was a black Ford Explorer. My dad's was burgundy. And if y'all remember the Eddie Bauer editions, you know, had that, that tan, you know, across the fender. So burgundy Ford Explorer with the, the tan across the, you know, versus uh, all black Explorer, 16 year old boy. I mean, I was the height of a man, probably size of a grown man. Uh, do the guy who did it was like about probably about Shaw's height. And probably the age that we are now. So I don't know how you can confuse the two. But I handled myself well. Thank God my parents 
have instilled, especially my dad, has instilled this in me at a, a young age, how you react in situations. I've always, and, and I could tell you, just like any other black men, we've got situations where we come across, co- you know, cops and they, they're not always good. Um, the one time, though, um, and my my uh, my kids, mom, and I've got two, two uh, biracial kids, and that's something, actually a topic... I want us to get on Maybe another get time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But you know, I was sitting with with his his mom, and uh, we we were married at the time. Actually, no, we were engaged, and we were waiting for a um, a place that made the uh, invites to open. We were just sitting out there, and we were we were having we were it, it really wasn't an argument. It was just a spirited uh, discussion, and we were just sitting in front of the store. I think the store opened at 10. It was like 9.39. And I remember I looked at the clock. Cop taps on the window, and he instantly asked her, you know, are, are you all right? And, you know, I, I remember that week, I, I just had a bad week, you know, rough week trying to hold down, work 60, 70 hours a, a week. I was in undergrad, so I was going to school full time, working like 60 hours a week trying to take care of business. And it's just you got all that on you. And. I just went off on him. I just popped off on him, you know, said, who you think you are? You know, she's about to be my wife. I would never hurt her. Why would you add, you know, and the response, you know, I, I shouldn't have responded in that manner. Um, really, I mean, he could have took me out the game, especially the way things are going nowadays. But, you know, for the most part, like I'm I'm 99% of the time I, I, I react accordingly and, and the way, you know, I've been coached to react. And, you know, I always ask my, my especially my dad for guidance. Um, you know, he's 60, how's it, 65, 65, no, 60, 66. And he's about to retire in October. So, you know, I ask him, bounce things off of him, you know, especially with work, life. But, you know, you can get taken out the game for one one bad moment. So I want to I want to just stress something because he said he acts accordingly 99 percent of the time. And that one time he was out of place. Yeah. And I want people to understand this is why I say you have to be on your A game at all, all time. times because 99 percent of the time leaves room for error. Yep. That one time you're not on your game. It can be the last time you ever get to play the game. You cannot just assume, look, I, I, I'm i not trying to get into, into two, well, I, I am, but I ain't trying to give it all at once. I get that we have rights when it comes to law enforcement. I didn't want to get on police in this one. We have rights as people, but the time to settle that right is in the courtroom, exactly. in my opinion. Agreed. Make it to the courtroom and then make your argument there. Let that police officer do his job, even if he's not doing it correctly. You need to document. You need to turn your cameras on, record, but cooperate yep. at all times. Do not do not try to make yourself the next YouTube sensation because you might be the next YouTube sensation, but not here to enjoy exactly. any of the, the – this is a whole nother discussion. Yep. We – Black men, I'm going to tell you right now, I fear, and I've said this in videos before, I fear, I'm a concealed carry holder. Me as well. I fear the interaction when a police officer knows he runs my place and he knows I'm <laughs> armed. I cover my vehicle in all kinds of Air Force retired things so he knows you're not being threatened here. Serve the country. I, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I did my part. You're doing your part. I'm not a threat. It's sad that I feel that I have to, you see my videos. I'm wearing an Air Force retired t-shirt in almost all my videos. I got Air Force retired shirt on right now. Proud of it though. Proud of it. I am proud of it. But one thing that I know is when a person sees me, they see a black man. First. First. So I wear my shirts, t-shirts. Matter of fact, I went to court. Uh, Cosmetology, they sent me, they, they asked me to come in. And I even told the judge there, I said, I know everybody, I see everybody else is here is dressed up in in suits and all this stuff. And it probably would have been better if I came dressed up in a suit. But I didn't wear this shirt to be disrespectful to the courtroom. I, re- I wore this shirt because the, the core values of the Air Force shows 
and it's been instilled in me. Yeah. And I wanted her to see it. I didn't want to have to explain it to her. I wanted her, every time the judge looked at me, I wanted her to know integrity first. Yeah. That's what Air Force is. That's doing the right thing even when nobody's looking. That's being on your A game at all times. All time. It's service before self and excellence in all we do. And I live by that. Excellence in everything I do. When I put these videos out, I want it to be excellent. When I do my haircuts, I want it to be excellent. When I'm raising my kids, I want it to be excellent. I want to be excellent as a husband. I want to lead this world with people thinking that I was excellent. Not judging me on the color of my skin. Yeah. Not judging me on what everybody else who might have looked like me has done. I want you to judge me. Those are my core values. That's what I wear on my chest every single time I walk out the house. I want people to know. Now, every once in a while, I wear a different T-shirt, but I try and have my closet stocked with my Air Force retired shirts because if you see that, it automatically kind of diffuses. Just like yep. you put on your glasses. There it is. Well, I spent my whole life trying to get my glasses off my face. <laughs> so I finally got them off, and I put my beard on, and I want people to know that it's like read my sign on my chest. Yeah. I did something. I'm trying to be something. I'm not here to harm you, and I don't want you to think that you can harm me. So this is this is sad that we have to walk around like everybody thinks we are the biggest monsters that walk the earth. I mean, I use the characteristics of uh, we had the I can't remember the 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 gorilla that got shot in the zoo here in Cincinnati. Oh yeah, for the, for the little boy who fell in the cage. Was it Harambe? Harambe? Yeah. That little. That gorilla did nothing wrong. He did not harm that boy at all. Nope. But he was taken down because he looked like he could be a threat. And what I'm saying is, a lot of times, what we don't realize is the world already views us as a threat. We yep. always getting mad about something. I walk around with that bottled up, and my biggest fear is that it's going to come out at the wrong time on the wrong person for some simple french fries. And Yeah. It, it, it's it's crazy that I feel that I have to be scared to walk around. But I will tell you this. People who wonder and think, why do I live in a predominantly white area? Why is my business in a predominantly white area? This is the thing that I feel. I noticed when I was in the military, I always felt the most comfortable around people who were like me, who wore the same uniform as me. But sometimes I got harmed the most by a person who wore the same uniform as me. I'm not going to mm -hmm. go into detail on that. But I trusted people because of how their appearance was. I made a preconceived notion off of people. Now, there's people who don't like black people in the, in the military. There is. Shoot, I'm sure there's black people who don't like black people and, in the military. Exactly. So the thing is, when you get around somewhere where you're comfortable, you let your guard down. You become comfortable. Yes, sir. We talk about black-on-black -black crime in the inner city, which this is not the topic of the conversation, but we talk about black-on-black -black crime in the inner city and I feel if I was around people who look more like me, I would be a little bit more comfortable. But my goal in my life is to never be comfortable. True. I don't ever want to be comfortable. So the reason I'm out here in the area that I'm in is because I never let my guard down. Yeah. I don't expect the person who lives next to me to like me. I don't expect them to watch my house. I don't expect, I don't expect anything from them because I automatically have a guard up that as soon as they see my house putting a for sale sign in my house. They'll be like, we got the neighborhood back. Cause I used to tell my wife and I'm sorry, I ain't trying to go into this. I used to tell my wife, I want to get out the military and I want to buy a house in an area where as soon as I move in, I want people. Cause this is what I think they think there goes the neighborhood. Yeah. I want that type of environment. I want to reach that level to where it's like, Oh my goodness. They're starting to be able to afford to live here. That is one of those things that I think now this is the catch though. My excellence or wanting to be excellent, my yard always looks better Boy. than everybody else's yard in the neighborhood. Boy. That's my drive. Now I think my neighbors look at me and they like, he's trying to show us up. But I'd much rather them think that yep. than to think we were right. There goes the neighborhood. True. So I don't let my guard down. I'm here. My business is here. I ain't letting my guard down. I keep my, my parking lot in the correct manner. I keep the inside of my business in the correct manner. Because I know I have to be on my A game. And if I get comfortable, then I'm going to slip a little bit and think that everything's good. And that's when that 99%, that 1% yeah, show 1%. up. I'll never be at 99% in this area. Yeah. So when a person moves and you said, 
that you had to move at 16 to Mason, which Mason is the, the city that's connecting to Westchester. When you said you had to move, it's, this is a whole nother thing that bothers me. This video has run very long, or audio, but it's amazing how even with black people, and this is another thing of being a black man, when we step outside of what is our comfort zone and mm -hmm. try and have more, we tear each other down. Oh, we do. We catch flack from white America. Both we sides. catch flack from black America. Yep. You're trying to have something, and it's crazy because even going back to school, if you were trying to be smart, you was a nerd. You yeah. was a geek. If you talk politically correct or not, well, if you talk correctly, then you try. You you're trying you to be white. white. You're trying you to be white. white. Right. You act white. And it's like, why does that have to be? Why can't I just be trying to be somebody who's getting ahead or trying to trying to do something with my life? Right. We pull ourselves down. So now crabs in the barrel mentality. Crabs in the barrel mentality. Now this is where it comes in because now we got black men pitted against black men. Yep. We got to deal with each other. We got to deal with police. We got to deal with just walking in the store and looking like we about to steal something. Yep. I got so many stories and I don't blame it on racism. It, I do believe racism exists, but I'm not trying to point everything out as being racist. I'm thinking people are stereotyping because it happened once before. So you lump us all together and say, everybody's going to do it. Right. It ain't always racist. I ain't getting into that point, but as a black man, life is harder than people give credit. Absolutely. And it's frustrating when you try to talk about it with someone who doesn't look like you and they try to water it down. Oh, well, you know, slavery was 400 years ago or, you know, they, they, they always try to lessen what it is. They always try to say, you know, with, with all, all the, the young black men, you know, that, that have been murdered by police say, well, oh, they just assume, well, they, they probably were doing something. They should, they should have listened, right? They should have listened. They should have complied. They shouldn't have been, you know, so was it the one guy selling, selling cigarettes, you Lucy's, know, yep. right. The, the other guy down here in Cincinnati, you know, he's running away from the cop and he gets shot in the back. They pay the guy, I forget a couple hundred thousand. They pay the, the, the policeman. You know, for I guess so I think it was defamation of character. Don't quote me of that, but whatever it is, he got a payday, and he's the one who shot the guy in the back. So it's it's just it just makes no sense. Well, I I definitely agree, and this is the thing. This is one of them, them things that I'm saying. This is why it's best to settle it in court. Absolutely. Don't try and settle your situation right there. Look, if you have a charge that you're running from, and that's why you want to fight with the police. Look, I'm going to be doing a video here soon. I lost one of my clients to a shooting. Now, it ain't got nothing to do with police. But I just want people to know, like, this client, I'm not going to bring his name up right now because when I do the video, I'm going to have his picture. I want to give much respect to his mother and his, his family. I want to know, I want people to know I ain't forgot about him, even though we didn't have that much time together. But this brother wanted to do everything he could to get out of the life that he lived. He Every time he sat in my chair, he would talk to me about how he was going to make a change in his life. And excuse me if I get a little emotional. But he wanted to make a change in his life. And the sad thing is, is I'm saying I lost him, meaning he didn't make the change fast enough. He didn't. Time is not on our sides, and everybody who's sitting here believing you got right. time to change and you got time to do all these things. And I know I keep jumping off the topic, but I'm so happy to have a brother here sitting here talking with me, and I'm not talking by myself. I appreciate you, Sean. I, I, I just got so many different things that we could be talking about, and I'm gonna keep making these videos. Like I said, this video's ran long, so I'm gonna give J Dub a chance to say anything else he got to say, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. But I want y'all to know that it's not easy walking around as a black man. And I understand this could be said for everybody out there. But I'm not everybody out there. Absolutely. I'm a black man that got to walk these streets. This is barbershop talk. And I talk to people. And you'll hear different, comp different, different subjects and everything. But what I'm concerned about is bringing awareness and waking people up. We doing this bickering back and forth. Everybody has problems. I can't focus on everybody's problems. I can focus on my problems and the problems of the people who are around me. Yeah. If it ain't your problem, it ain't your problem. But that don't mean the problem don't exist. So I'm going to turn it over to J-Dub one more time. Then we're going to close this boy out. Jay, you got anything else you want to say? Man, I just, you know, want to appreciate you having me on here, man. Like, like I say, you know, about Shaw, I just got to get my two cents. Man, 
hell of a black man, hell of a black man. I mean, hell of a father as well. I mean, he, he makes me want to, want to be a better father, be a better man to be honest. And it's quite real, quite real. Um, and you know what he said earlier, I don't surround myself with, with knuckleheads. You know, I, you know, I got a, a, a small circle of individuals, you know, Shaw's one of these individuals that, you know, I, I, I put us on a billboard, you know, like we got Kate, we like, the super neat row, like yeah. seriously, like and that's how I feel about the brothers I hang around, because you know we all got our you know skills and trade put us up in front of ev- anyone, and you know you, it's like we we we're the type of brothers that really you would hang your hat on, like this this is you know you, you look up black men, black proud black men, you know we come in all shapes and sizes, but you know this is you know the t- type of individuals that I'm around. This is who I, I want to aspire to be and help me, you know, continue to be better, you know, and push forward. And I'm going to tell you, this brother is pretty daggone impressive. Uh, we can go into to a little bit of his life at a later time. But even, like you said, the first time we met, it it, it should have never have happened. <laughs> yeah. It should have never have happened. But he sat in my chair one time, and like you said, we connected from that moment. And... Is brothers like this that I, I'm telling you, we I hear all the time that, that we're nowhere, we're not, we don't exist, right. and I'm saying, hey, we recognize each other, we we yes, sir. we we migrate towards each other. Yeah. So a lot of times, maybe especially for women, maybe y'all looking in the wrong places. Right. Maybe I, I don't know, but how can I see him so clearly, and 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 get to interact with him every single day? It, it could be the locations that you're going to. True, but we ain't talking about that. That's, that's, we was, that's another that's, topic. Man, y'all. I got so many that's topics. Set, boy. I can't get them all out fast enough. But like I said, this video audio went long. I'm gonna wrap it up, and this is a look into, and it's a brief look because you cannot wrap all this stuff up into one short video. No, we could do segments on this yep. forever. Everybody has different experiences and outlooks on their experiences, but this is. Mine and JW's first time doing audio together. I'm gonna be doing this on a regular basis. JW, I hope you come back. I'll be here, brother. Man, this brother even brought the microphones for this one. This is this <laughs> this brother is impressive. Like he had the equipment. So what I'm saying is we're gonna keep doing this. I might have some different people on at different times. I'm trying I thought it was gonna be some people walking in that join in with us, but they busy working, so we ain't gonna take them away from their work. But what I will say is this this your boy. Shaw, a.k.a. Shaw the Barber, a.k.a. Skill Hands of Work. You can find me on Instagram at Shaw the Barber. Boom. And we out. Peace.